Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. speck of angel's hair, a smidgen of wild ender's foot, hey, Jethro! Doggone it, I thought she was granny. I got turkey bones, moccasin flower, oil mistletoe. Mistletoe? Just are you making up one of Granny's love potions? You just get on out of here. Boy, wait till Granny catches you. Well, she ain't gonna. I told her I seen a big granddaddy carp in the fountain at the park. And she's out fishing for it. <laughs> Give me a hand, Jed. Catch anything, Granny? Yeah. Caught the dickens from the policeman. What bird? For fishing in the fountain in the park. Jethro told me there was a big granddaddy carp in there. A carp? Wait till I find that boy. There was nothing in that fountain but two puny goldfish and 12 cents in change. <laughs> that ought to do it. Now, measure out one drop of spell starter. <laughs> Heck, if one drop will get me one girl. <laughs> Darling, darling, my true love, come a-swooping like a dove. <laughs> hey, I dug at work. I conjured me up a sweetheart. That ain't all, Charlie. Granny? <laughs> What's going on? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now. Let me go, Jay. That girl crazy goof got into my potions. Uh, Granny. Made a love. Calm down. I'll see the boy gets what he deserves. I get him first. You can have the leftovers. <laughs> the hickory switch ain't the way to handle this. You're right. Get me my big soap paddle. <laughs> what I mean is no amount of whooping is going to get girls off his brain. What I think he needs is more schooling. More schooling? He's been through the sixth grade. How much further can he go? <laughs> his college? Ah, I say put him to work. Prentice him out as a blacksmith or a shingle splitter. Well, I hear tell you can't be a success these days unless you got a college education. What can college learn him? He already knows how to read and write. I know, and cipher too. But it ain't just the learning I'm thinking of. There's other things you get at college. Like what? Well, like girls. Girls? <laughs> Excuse me, Chief. Shh. It's my new record, Falling Coins, recorded live at the U.S. Mint. Uh, Mr. Clavin and Jethro are here. Go! Send them in. Send them in. Gentlemen! Mr. Drysdale? Howdy, Mr. Drysdale. Mr. Clavin, Jethro, what can I do for you? Well, uh, we're sorry to bother you, but we've been talking about Jethro's future. Yes? Well, you see, his ma, my cousin Pearl, always wanted him to amount to something. Uh, you know, get himself a good job, like uh, president of a bank. Uh, well, how about making him a vice president? We'll give you a nice big desk with your name on the door. Would you like that, Jethro? Oh, well, that's dandy. But what would I be vice president of? Well, let's see. 
Uh, I well, guess... if you want, you could make him vice president in charge of my money. Your money? Yeah, he could take care of it, loan it out, invest it. Oh, no, no. You see, this would... Well, I reckon for a job like that, he would need a college education. Right? Oh, that, that's true. Oh, I would love to make him a vice president right now, but we have a hard and fast rule that all VPs must have a college degree. Right, Miss Hathaway? Well, actually... Exactly. <laughs> so, the moment you graduate and get that old sheepskin, there'll be a job waiting for you. Oh, well, that's what we come here for. Oh, we want you to tell me a good college to go to. College? Oh, well, let's see. Now, Miss Hathaway, tell Jethro a good college to go to. Oh, well, uh, I don't... I can't offhand. I... How about that one you went to, that there, uh, Vassar? Oh, Vassar? Oh, well, there's nothing but girls there. Hot dog! That's the one for me! <laughs> what I meant was only women could attend Vassar. Oh, shucks. Well, uh, what about them other two colleges you was thinking of? Oh, oh yeah, uh, uh, Harvard and Yale. Yeah, I reckon either one of them would be okay. He ain't choicey. <laughs> well, you see, Mr. Clampett, what I'm trying to say is... Uh, Miss Hathaway, what is it I'm trying to say? Well, actually, it's, uh, it, it's very close to the end of the semester. I, I doubt if we could find a college that would take Jethro this late in the year. Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Doggone. Now, hold on, boy. Maybe we can get you into one of them schools back home. Home? No! What I, what I mean is, let's not give up so easily. Now, this may take time, but we'll find this boy a college. Can I help look? We'll all look. We're going to find just the right place for you. I'll commence looking right now. I'll go to UCLA, USC, MIT, LSU, VMI. Mm, no, it ain't enough he ciphers like the wind. Just listen to him spell. <laughs> Well, Chief, you've really done it this time. Don't worry, you'll think of something. <laughs> How could we get a boy with a sixth grade education into college? It's going to take determination, ingenuity, salesmanship, and a fantastic amount of money. <laughs> really? What college in the entire country would corrupt its standards to that extent for mere financial gain? <laughs> Dean Frisbee, may I see you a moment, please? Class is in session, Mrs. Pringle. Well, it's quite important. Very well. Continue your business letter practice, girls. I'm sorry to bother you, Dean Frisbee, but I've been going over our accounts and I felt I just had to talk with you right away. Well? Well, according to my computations, our profit-loss ratio is way toward a carryover of receivables versus the seasonal depreciation. Don't we... give me that classroom gobbledygook. <laughs> what you're saying is, we're broke. Well, I didn't want to put it so harshly. I'm only glad that Chancellor Frisbee isn't here to see this day. Oh, I'm sure your husband would approve of the fine way you've maintained the standards of Frisbee Business College. Well, he wouldn't approve of our going hungry. What we need is more students and quick. Well, who'd be silly enough to enroll so late in the semester? Well, howdy. <laughs> The barber shop is downstairs. No. I was driving by and seen your sign. I want to go to your college. But you're a man. Thank you. We couldn't enroll you. Oh, please. You're the 12th college I've been to. But our students are... Uncle all... Jed, give me tuition money. <laughs> Does that mean I'm enrolled? You're enrolled. What? <laughs> Don't! Will I tell my uncle did? <laughs> Forgive me, Wilbur. <laughs> Morning, Ellie. Morning, Pop. I just about got Jethro's lunch ready, Jed. Well, this being his first day at college, he might not have time to eat a big meal. I thought about that. So I just put him up a quick snack. What's the name of 
of Jethro's College, pal? It's a uh, Frisbee business. Frisbee business? <laughs> yeah, I reckon they call it that because they turn out mostly executives and vice presidents and the like. Well, if Jethro won't go to college, why can't I? Well, uh, I don't think they let you in, Ellie. You ain't got what you call uh, the educational background Jethro does. <laughs> What if I found one that would take me? Well, I wouldn't get your hopes up, but uh, if you find one that'll take you, ain't no reason why you can't go. You be I'm gonna go look in the phone book and find me a college. <laughs> Jethro ain't gonna have time for breakfast if he don't hurry. What's he doing up there so long? Well, I reckon he's slicking up. He spent a lot of time yesterday shopping for college clothes. What did Riska do? <laughs> The cat's meow. Well, you look like some kind of a critter. It's warm in there, isn't it? Oh, I just wear this over to campus. Then I wear my Letterman sweater. <laughs> What's the FB stand for? Football? No, Frisbee? Business. Is that what they wear over there? Yeah, that's what all the college fellers wear. Are you sure? Yeah, I seen it in the Buster Crab movie once on television. <laughs> Buster always was a spiffy dresser. Well, I reckon if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for Jethro. Well, I gotta be going. Don't wanna be late. Oh, uh, hold on, boy. <coughs> Jethro? Ain't nobody in our family ever went to college before. So, Granny and me, I'd like to give you a little something. Hot dog. My very own fountain pen. <laughs> now, boy, you are about to get an opportunity that I never had, and I hope... <laughs> I hope that uh, you will realize that along with this opportunity comes new responsibilities for a man to... <laughs> now, your ma and all your kinfolks is counting on you to do yourself proud. Because we know that you got intelligence and a brain to... Well, found out how the ink comes out. Shouldn't have pulled this little lever up. I'll close it. Sorry, Uncle Jed. Well, give it all you got, boy. Uh, I won't have time to change. I'll just keep my coat buttoned up. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. I found one. I found one. A phone book? No, a college that'll take me. I talked to him, and I'm going to get educated just like Jethro. Well, this is it. College of Judo and Karate. <laughs> judo and Karate? Well, Jethro was reading about one called uh, William and Mary. They said I could start today. I got to go and get ready. <laughs> Jed? Yeah, Granny? That's both young'uns going off to college. <laughs> kind of chokes you up, don't it? <laughs> Before we begin, I wish to tell you that we're expecting a new student in class this morning. A somewhat, uh, unusual student. <laughs> who, uh... <laughs> wow! This college is everything I was hoping for! <laughs> Mr. Bodine, please find yourself a seat. And you may take off your coat. Oh. I'd rather not. <laughs> Very well. Uh, students, this morning, we will begin with the Frisbee method of taking short memos. <laughs> Mr. Bodine. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Turn your chair around and pay attention. 
Students, I've used the Frisbee method to write some words that you will use often. The, with, that, and. Now, will someone please come to the board and try this for themselves? <laughs> Mr. Bodie. <laughs> now, write V. T. H. E. The. These are both V. But there is one difference. Now, what is that? Yours is spelled wrong. <laughs> Perhaps we'd better practice typing for a bit. Back to your seat. Mrs. Pringle? Go around and check their posture. I want to rest a bit. Yes, dear. <laughs> Typing 200 words a minute. Wow. Where did you ever learn to type like that? A picking cotton. <laughs> <laughs> that's nothing but gibberish. Well, what do you mean? You're, not, you're just hitting the keys at random. You're not spelling words. Word. Oh, why didn't you say so? <laughs> I, uh, S, is. <laughs> now that I've learned to type, let's go on to something else. Uh, uh, Dean Frisbee, perhaps Mr. Bodine could learn uh, to answer the telephone. Oh, I'm already a whiz at that. <laughs> there is a right way and a wrong way to answer the telephone. Students, we will now jump ahead to our telephone procedure drill. Get out your telephones. Bodine, you will be the calling party. I will then connect you with Miss Plumpet, and she will demonstrate the correct telephone answering procedure. Fletcher Smedley, Bacon and Barnes. Good morning. Whoops, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> you give me the wrong number. Uh, that was Fletcher somebody. <laughs> Miss Plumpet was answering correctly. Now, shall we try it again? And this time, will you please stand up, Miss Plumpet? Fletcher Smedley, Bacon and Barnes. Good morning. Well, howdy. Are you Miss Plumpet? Whom do you wish to speak with? Oh, you'll do just fine. Are there any messages? Uh, yeah. Uh, what are you doing after class? <laughs> this is ridiculous. Well, yeah, it sure is. Why, she's just standing right over there. <laughs> Now, uh, what are you doing after class? <laughs> Mrs. Pringle, start preparing a diploma. Mr. Bodine is going to graduate. <laughs> Uncle Jack! <laughs> Uncle Jack, I done graduated college. We just started this morning. Yeah, I know. But look at this. What's this? Well, that's what you call my diploma. Did Mr. Dry just say it was going to be sheepskin? Well, it's awful good grade of paper. Yeah, it is that. We'd mighty proud of you. Too bad your ma couldn't have been here for the ceremony. I tried to hold him back, but they said I was beyond teaching. <laughs> nothing new they could show you? Oh, yeah. I learned some executive type stuff. Like what? Watch. Well? That's it. I learned to sit proper, so I could be poised and charming. How long did it take you to learn that? Oh, just a couple hours. That ain't all us college men know. I learned how to type, and you sharpen pencils. I get it. Fletcher Schmedley, Bacon and Barnes, good morning. Oh, ain't that something? <laughs> did I take a message? Hello? Hello? They hung up. <laughs> Miss Hathaway, you got me the wrong number. That's strange. I know I dialed Mr. Clampett. Don't argue. Call again. I want to tell him I finally found a college that will take Jethro. Chief, you're not really going to send Jethro to that Clinchville A&M. So what's wrong with it? 
Well, it's so isolated, stuck out there in the middle of the desert. So what? They've got a beautiful campus, new administration building, new library, new swimming pool. Really? Well, how, how do you know? Because we're building it for them. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Jed, I almost hated to graduate. I was a real BMOC. A what? Well, that stands for big man on campus. <laughs> Matter of fact, I was a OMOC. <laughs> Only man on campus. <laughs> I'll get this one. Hello? Well, howdy there, Mr. Drysdale. I just wanted to tell you that we've located a college for Jethro. He what? He did. Well, he's already found one. <laughs> well, that's wonderful, Mr. Clavitt. Now, you tell him the moment he gets his diploma, I am going to make him a vice president. Gee, what are you saying? Well, it took Jethro 12 years to get through the sixth grade. College should be good for life. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mr. Clavin. Yes, as soon as he graduates, you have him come in and... He what? <laughs> he did? <laughs> Would you leave the room? I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> Boy, best get going. Your job's waiting for you. Shucks. I'm almost sorry I'm so doggone smart. I didn't even get to see one football game. <laughs> Jethro. Uh, yes, sir? Now, make us proud of you. You are vice president in charge of my money. <laughs> Don't worry, Uncle Jed. When I get through handling it, you're going to have a million dollars. Jethro. Oh, yes, sir? I got 50 million now. <laughs> Uncle Jed, I'm a college graduate. You let me worry about that. <laughs> Educated. Who brought you home? I walked home across the hill. Boy, that college of judo and karate ain't worth a hoot. Why? What happened? Well, I went in this big room with a real thick rug on the floor, and the teacher come out wearing his pajamas. His pajamas? Yeah, and when I told him I wanted to enroll, why well, he got mad at a rattlesnake with a sword, too. What'd you get mad about? I don't know. We must have got out on the wrong side of the bed. Anyway, he commenced shouting and chopping away at me. Well, he even tried to trip me. Land sakes, what did you do? I'd give him what fur. Bounced him around that rug like a basketball. <laughs> Good for you, darling. <laughs> I didn't stop throwing him till he offered to graduate me. He graduated? Yeah, but he didn't give me no cap and gown. All I got was this skinny old black bell. <laughs> Wait till I tell your paw. That college is going to be short one honorary professor. <laughs> from courage of judo and karate. I wish meet parents of a most astonishing student, Ari May. Oh, you do, do you? <laughs> you sure got your nerve coming around here in your pajamas. Pardon? You might think you can take on the young one, but let's see what you can do with Granny. Come on. Come on, let's see you do something. Ah, uh, so you like to see karate. <laughs> sitting out here. Well, it's Miss Hathaway's lunch hour, and somebody has to take Jethro's calls. Where's Jethro? <laughs> you give him your own? I couldn't pick out just one secretary, so I hired me all the girls at Frisbee's Business College. <laughs> and now, where was I? Dear sir. Oh, yeah. Dear sir, uh, howdy. As vice president in charge of my Uncle Jed's money, I would like to welcome you to the... The T-H-E. <laughs> I would like to welcome you to this here bank. Now 
now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation. Thank <laughs> you.